Uh, any questions? Dare you ask any questions about flexion and extension? Do you flex or extend when you eat? You find a happy medium for eating, absolutely. Yes, exactly, that is the answer for that one because if you're really extended, it's really hard to swallow and if you're really flexed, it's really hard to swallow. So ask, you know, an OT or a speechy or somebody at physio, whoever works in the neurological people who have trouble finding a balance between flex and extension. Neurological people, I just called them. It's not very good, is it? Uh, swallowing and eating requires you to find the a balance point. Now, imagine uh, um, digesting if you were up in this, in the JC position and you really lengthened here, you know, like your digestion is not good here. Just like you don't want to digest your food necessarily all curled up either because you, your gut is either really stretched or really contracted. So um, it's a happy medium for eating. Well, it makes you burp, doesn't it? Don't you burp? I burp if I'm a bit stressed. If my tummy's really hanging on and I eat, it get a bit gassy. Is that telling you too much about, I don't actually burp very much. <laughs> no, I'm not gassy. I don't, I hardly ever burp, which tells you I'm hardly ever stressed. I, I don't, I'm too, I'm way, I'm too lazy to be stressed. Sorry. Um, I just want to ask, is it, is it good to talk and eat and swallow at the same time? Well, if you listen to Zoran yesterday, you can't. You can only do one at a time. The question is, will you do each one well? So if you, you let them blur and, you, and you're talking and eating and swallowing at the same time, well, you, firstly, the answer is you can't. But if you don't, what you're doing then is you're conflating them all, then you're not doing any one well. So if you're swallowing food and talking, then you, yes, you probably aspirate. Sorry? Yeah, you it's, it's spit and splutter and... So no, you, you know, it's multitasking the myth. It's a nonsense. So when you laugh, you can't swallow, right? <laughs> you can't swallow. Well, laughing is pushing air out. Yes, mm -hmm. laughing is ha, ha, ha. It's closing off the throat. So will there be a, a time where you're closing of the throat and non-closing of the throat get mixed up because of the way you breathe or the way you choke? Sure. Have, have you ever aspirated? Yeah. When you, you know something goes down the wrong way, as it were, yeah. So that's just being a bit mindless. You, your breathing and swallowing is is not well di differentiated. Mm. Yeah. Um. There was one thing I was going to say about the multitasking. Well, not that that's the word that Zoran used, but um, Narian's point about the when the when he was sanding the deck or whatever it was, and and music was part of it. That's a that's a. There's something very beautiful that the brain can do with that, um, where two actions become one action. So Zoran's right, we can only do one action, but our brain can make two actions one action. Yeah. So some things we just can't make as two actions because they're subserved, the same mechanism is, has to do two different things. But when it's, some, it's particularly something like music, we have this facility around entrainment, which actually is an engineering term, where one system's rhythm is picked up by another system's rhythm, and music does that. So therefore, you, when you're sanding the deck and the music, those two things become one. So it's actually, we're still doing one thing. You've entrained the rhythm of the music into your act, action. So I'll come back to you, Nathan. Yeah. Yeah. That, you can entrain your breath. Yeah, that's entrainment. Yeah. Uh, now to Nathan. This is not, these are not questions about flexion and extension, by the way. I've, I've distracted myself. I, I have had students give me awards for being the, the uh, tangent of the lecturer tangent of the year award I have had several times. Anyway. You've got like synesthesia as well. Yes. So like different senses for each other. Yeah, yeah, that's fascinating. It's like, you know, I could, I could say that's one movement and that's one movement and that's two movements or that's one movement. Yes, you, know? you can associate the yeah. two. I mean, the classic association thing is when you learn to drive a car, mm. right? And, you know, you, you'll remember when you first learned to drive uh, and you're thinking, oh, I have to steer, I have to change the gear, 
I have to brake, I have to accelerate, and there's like a cigarette in my mouth. Yeah, that's right. And and the and my and the and my mate next door I have to talk to, and there's like seven discrete things to do. What do we do? Is intelli our intelligent nervous systems learn to chunk things together? So there is smoking and gear changing become one thing, steering and braking or steering and the indicator become one thing, and then eventually all of those eight things from a neurological point of view become one thing. My Aikido teacher always described Aikido like learning music. You know, you learn the notes, you learn the timing, and then you know suddenly you've got chords which yeah. make notes together, and then you yeah. do a chord pattern and the, the brain that you know takes all this complexity and simplifies it. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. As well. So, I mean, in, in motor control theory, one of the theories is, is uses music, actually uses uh, the alphabet as an example. And why this is relevant to Feldenkrais is when we're on the floor, what we're doing often is examining the individual notes. And then you get up and walk and that's like the music again. You put the individual notes that we've been exploring back into the musical composition, which is walking. Or the other metaphor is that we have these little movement strategies, which are like the letters of the alphabet. And then our nervous system learns to constrain. Like we've only got 26 letters, right? And a few spaces, but we can create a lexicon. You know, we can create a library of combinations of those same 26 letters that will, you know, the difference between war and peace and 50 shades of gray, you know. So we can constrain letters in so many different permutations in terms of language. And the same thing is said of movement, is that we've got this sort of finite set of muscles, set of joints, set of uh, degrees of freedom of movement, and we can constrain them in so many different configurations that the same set of muscles and joints can do the salsa and can chop off somebody's head. I just said that to shock you, but you're so unshockable. You'll just all go like this. You're used to me already. Three days and you got me pegged. So that's, and again, that's that constraining, pulling things apart, putting them back together in different configurations is, is what we're doing on the floor. And it also speaks to this sort of, this vaguely speaks to this multitasking thing. Okay. Are you bringing us back to flexion extension? or oh, it's kind of, but it's on the... Um, on the I, tangent. No, do it, yeah. do it, do it, um, do it. The question about um, the things that wire together. Oh, yeah. Um, I wonder about, we spend a lot of our time with our eyes closed so that we can sense things more. But what if we only go into that heightened sensing with our eyes closed, then we aren't training the ability to go into the heightened sensing with our eyes open. Yeah. And also, they're going slower and gentler, but then we're only training it. I mean, it can flow into your more complex, more powerful actions. But yeah. I'm really interested in also training with a little bit of power and a little bit of sure. more effort. Have you, not, have you not experienced changes of tempo and effort in the room already? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. But, I mean, and, and yeah. but I just deliberately go into that place myself a little bit. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah and no, and it's, you, you're, you're absolutely idea. right. And that's the transference of learning stuff. Yeah. Because if we only ever worked with our eyes closed and um, slow and gentle, yeah, you're right. That's what we'd get really good at, work, uh, moving with our eyes closed and being slow and gentle. And the world's not like that. You know, I was telling Zona, I was doing an advanced training in Sydney. One of the trainers that we had, who's now passed away, Gabby, took on a student because she did a whole FI with the woman's eyes open and the woman was protesting. But, but, but we do fold and cross with the eyes shut. And Gabby, the trainer's name, going, what? You know, she's Israeli, so she talks like big, big voice. Uh, you don't live your life with your eyes closed, you know? And the, and the FI was in Sydney. And this woman had this whole thing about, no, Feldenkrais is lying down with your eyes closed. <laughs> you can't give me an FI in sitting with my eyes open. That is doubly wrong. And there's this argument going on and Gabby's just laughing her head off because that's what she does really well. Saying, no, the real world is sitting up because this woman had pain when she was sitting. So Gabby said, of course, you're going to work in sitting and you're going to have your eyes open because, because you are. So you, you're right. And um, that's why Feldenkrais said this is the method with no principles. Now, that's not correct. We do have principles. Uh, ha what he was trying to say was as soon as you start saying, oh, Feldenkrais is about lying on the floor, going slow and gentle with your eyes closed, you're diminishing it. Uh, because that's just one tool. Yeah. It's actually one small p principle that we might, was a strategy actually, we might use. Yeah. Um, 
So you're absolutely right. And that's why you get up and walk because that's the real world. And you might walk slow and you might work, walk fast. And then when you're, when you're learning to teach ATM, you learn when you want to introduce a variation in timing or strength or something. And, and like I said the other day, some of the, some of the ATMs, they're bloody vigorous. Um, and some of them are not at all, but they're mentally vigorous. Some are physically vi vigorous. Um, so there's the whole gamut. Yeah, there's something for everybody is what I'm saying. All right, come back to flexion extension. Lie on your back. 